Very nice. That's much better, isn't it? I think so. Loud and, loud and clear, and you have a very nice view and a picture and stuff. Nice. Yeah. Cool, Dylan. So we just we just begin from the beginning for for a second. You 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 you've been stopped in this short. Uh, like, how did we how did we uh, came here? Uh, kind of conversation. Yeah. So okay. please. So I am from Ireland. I was born in 1978 and I moved to Berlin in 2013 and the idea really was to have a bit of an adventure and um, yeah so to come over I was do, doing some projects related to sustainability and then I also was doing some music back in Ireland and I ended up getting some music writing projects here in Berlin um, for theatre and so I was doing those and then really I was living hand to mouth, like I just wasn't making enough money really to, to live in a, in a way that was not stressful. Um, and I started doing some cleaning work. And yeah. then through that cleaning job, uh, I stop, did that stop. for like two years. Okay. Stop, stop here. Uh, do, doing these yeah. uh, cleaning jobs, it was your first time doing cleaning jobs? Uh, I'd never done a cleaning job before. And I saw this ad on Craigslist saying, or I don't know, maybe it was Facebook it was just like, you want to earn some extra money, you know, you can earn 15 euro an hour. And I was like, I wonder what that is, because it didn't even say what it was. And I was like, I'll try it. And um, then the person said, it's it's for cleaning work. And I was like, oh, no, I really don't think I want to do cleaning work. But I was really strapped for cash. And then I contacted the person, her name was Amber, and um, we, we met for coffee. And she was kind of just explaining the job to me. And I was like, OK, I'm going to try it. And then for two years, I was doing like 10 to 15 hours a week cleaning work to, to pay rent and stuff as well, also while doing artistic work. And then eventually, I became friends with Amber, who ran the company. Huh? And she became pregnant. Huh? Sorry, sorry, continue. Um, she became pregnant eventually, and she wanted to stop running the company. And she was just like, do you want to buy it? And I had no money to buy the company. And I was like, well, I would, but I don't have money. Like, I was literally living kind of, you know, paying the bills every month, and that was it. And so she just said, well, listen, if you give me 15% of the profit every month for 18 months, then you can have the company at the end of the 18 months. So we went to the lake and got a piece of paper and just, like, wrote it <laughs> by hand. And her friend Anna was there, and Anna was like, yeah, yeah, I'm the witness, that's fine. And we just handed over the company. And then that's, so since then I've owned it. Well, since 18 months later I owned it. Okay. Super, it's a super story. First time I hear it, of course. But uh, if you, just some point uh, out of it, if it's okay with you, to, to, to relate to them. Um, like, uh, well, you said, okay, I met her and then we became friends. And so the, well, this transition, can you, can you enlarge it a little bit about it? Like she, yeah, was your, she, she was your boss to begin with, no? She was my boss, exactly. We're about the same age. Okay. And um, I don't know what happened exactly. She's a really friendly person. She's very funny. Um, she's very creative. And we just ended up kind of, I don't know how it happened exactly. We just ended up like probably more towards the end of the two years of me working. We, be, we began to just kind of have a bit more contact and start meeting a little bit more and stuff. And we ended up going for lunch and then, and then I don't know, at some point she was like, maybe you'd be a good person to take over the company. And I was like, oh, and I never thought I would take over a company of any sort, let alone a cleaning company. But <laughs> then I really, at that point, I was in a position where I really had had enough of not having enough money. Like I was, I, I guess I was 37 or something like that. I don't know, 38. And I really just, I was like, oh my God, I feel kind of stuck because I can't, I don't have any financial freedom. And I thought, well, maybe it's good because also she was explaining to me that the way she runs the company means that she still has a lot of freedom. Um, and it's not like you have to be stuck in one office, in one place all of the time. Um, and I, I like my own freedom. So 
I, um, I kind of thought, well, maybe it makes sense to take this on and see how it goes. And there's no risk in the end to me because if I'm paying 15% of the profit over 18 months, then, you know, it's not like I'm putting in loads yeah, of money up front. It sounds like so, a win-win situation. Okay, and another question. Like, uh, so this uh, beautiful young, uh, still young, uh, uh, Deirdre, uh, um, which is an artist and she's like, uh, she's cool. Uh, starving for money and beginning to clean this this yeah. uh, this uh, this do you remember do, do you have uh, any remembrance of this uh, transition if there was any transition or how, how did you felt with that cleaning it was funny because um i suppose i had probably some um thoughts in my head about being and about what that meant um and I suppose I came from a family where I'd, you know, studied and done my degree and then gone and done my master's and worked in, you know, various like jobs that would have been kind of well paid and stuff like that. And um, when I was in my 20s and then I was just like, oh, my God, I never thought I'd do cleaning. Like there was nothing that I had against it, but I just felt like this was something that I'd never imagined that I would do. And um, then... I basically got into a um, um, <laughs> sorry my boyfriend is making me laugh <laughs> um, I got into, <laughs> I got into uh, but later um, please do yeah. this later let, let her be for a second my, my friend <laughs> <laughs> you can make me laugh later <laughs> um, so basically yeah I remember just the first job I was like oh this is mad like I don't even really know I mean I cleaned before but he kind of I mean she was just like you just have to go to this job and you just have to start cleaning and I was like okay no no, no instructions and, no no like like, uh, like there wasn't like a proper uh, uh, like uh, introduction or stuff or there was kind of a, a document that laid out what was meant to be done mm-hmm like a, a document of what I should cover. I think there was a manual. I can't remember exactly, but I just remember thinking, um, you know, it felt a bit daunting to be honest with you because I'd never done it before. <laughs> and so I just turned up at somebody's house and I had to ring the bell and I was like, hello, <laughs> I'm here to clean the house. So it was like my whole, my whole role had just changed and I was like, right, this is it now. Let's see what, what happens. And um, I just ended up, I ended up just getting into it and just like, it's really, like you're very free in terms of you're mainly working on your own um you're working the hours that you choose to work mm-hmm. and i really like making my own money i realized quite quickly that i prefer to make my own money and not have to really answer to somebody else just do my job do it well and then leave and i don't really want to have to and i try and run the company that way as well where Mainly people are kind of autonomous, you know? Uh, uh, okay, well, um, we, we're jumping out to the benefits of the job, but I want to, for a second, if it's okay with you, uh, we will go after, we will uh, leave it behind. But I'm just, there is a point, by, yeah. doing, by, by doing that, I'm, I'm, I'm fully aware of that. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not an interviewer. I, I'm your, I, was, I was working with you, I, you were my boss for the last uh, month. We know what we're doing. So we should feel comfortable with that but I, I understand that there's a transition in the point that you that you agree and i wish to try to for a second to 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 be there with you if it's okay with you okay it's not to to hunt you just to because there's a point there that i'm trying to understand also with myself try yeah. to understand what is it exactly because uh yeah this transition from uh, being being uh, being uh, like like it's to accept something I, and i try to understand what this ex, ex, what is it exactly I, i'm curious about how you see it this transition this is saying okay i'm going to this, to do this like what yeah. is it exactly what, what happens there if, if you have some info i think you do <laughs> um yeah at the beginning i was like no i'm not going to do this and then it took a few days and i thought about it and it was kind of a question of just really needing money to be honest with you you know mm. i really needed money and um shame it was a little shame there, there was shame with that 
I think there might have been a little bit. Okay. Um, I might have been a little bit because I had had kind of, I'd done so much study and so much kind of, um, you know, like preparation for a future. And then, you know, I felt like maybe this was a step backwards in some ways because I felt like, yeah, I kind of invested a lot in doing study and work and so on that I thought would bring me somewhere. I wasn't even entirely sure where. Mm -hmm. But I think that... Um, can, yeah, can, I, can, 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 you imagine, can you imagine yourself doing this in, back in Ireland? You see, that's the thing, no, because that, that's what I was about to say. I really wanted to live in Berlin. I wanted to stay here. I wanted to have these... I wouldn't have had the artistic opportunities in Ireland as I had in Berlin. And that was more important to me than to do a job that was higher paid or had a higher status or whatever. So for me, I felt like doing this work, you know, it was worth it because it meant that I could also do this other creative work that was really interesting for me. And to live in a city that was really interesting and stimulating and exciting. Um, and I wanted to be here. You know, and there's probably other jobs that I could have done here, but like when you find yourself in Berlin, you like the economy is it's a strange economy because you have so many very, very competent, talented people that just need to earn some money in some way, shape, or form in order to be able to do their creative work. Um, and so, yeah, you end up like the, the team. I don't know if you want me to jump ahead now. Anyway, but the team go ahead. in Sunshine are way overqualified <laughs> for the job. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting. Like, I think one of the most interesting parts of this whole thing for me, and that probably comes from my own personal experience, is how to do this work in a way, because I think you're right. I think there's so much in our society, in our culture, around status and what gives worth to a person um, ac according to how we live in a culture, in a society. And I, my own personal experience with going out and doing cleaning was, for me, it was very clear that my work as a person and my status can have nothing to do with what other people impose upon me, if you know what I mean. It has to, it has to have to do with how I feel. And so, for me, it became like a practice actually, where every single time I went to go and do a cleaning, I would kind of prepare myself in a way to like know that my worth, because I think it's, it's really about the definition of a cleaning person and how they're seen in society um, by like the wider society. I'm not talking about how they're seen by me. I'm talking about how a cleaning person is seen by wider society and often it's seen as a very low status and somebody who like you use the word slavery i mean i don't know if i would say slavery but i would say definitely the slaves were the cleaners you know as well as many other things but they were the cleaners uh, and i would say that people who are clean, cleaning people and also even when you look up on google right germany cleaning one of the first things that comes up is in Germany, cleaning is seen as one of the lowest status positions to have. And so you're kind of, when you're going to your cleaning jobs, that's somewhere in your head, whether you like it or not. That whole cultural context is in your brain and in your soul somewhere. And so for me, it became about this practice of going to these jobs, knowing that there's this entire cultural background, but also having to be like, well, like that isn't how I define myself, you know what I mean? And that's not how I define myself with this customer and with this day and with this job. So for me, it became a practice of going and doing this work and earning my money, but also not defining myself in a way as being somebody lesser than or having a lower status than anybody else in society. So it's kind of like a bit of a personal conversation with a cultural, uh, like it's a, a monumentous cultural belief or something you know what i mean it's like that's the belief in culture but i have a different belief and so i need to have this this kind of ongoing conversation with that in myself i wasn't talking to everybody else about it and so sometimes you turn up at a job and people are a little bit like some people are absolutely lovely and some people are very dismissive you know what i mean mm -hmm. and this is something that 
you have to deal with as well. And it's like, this person is being really dismissive towards me because they see me as the cleaner, they see me as lower status, most likely. Um, and so you then need to find that kind of strength and like self-worth and um, just sense of like also not taking things too seriously, I guess. And, um, and just do a really good job, but also leave their, their reaction to you outside of yourself. Not to, get, not, not, not to get dirty by that. Yeah, exactly. So to, to kind of not swallow any of that, not to let that into your own space, hmm. but to still do a really good job. So there's this also, I found that line very funny because I really want to do, do a good job and I want to be very courteous to the people, but also I have my own boundaries. And so there was a bit, there was always a navigation with that. And I often talk to people in the interviews about that because I would, I interviewed everybody, you know, before they came onto the team. Mm -hmm. And I would often talk to people about that as well and say like, you know, you know, make sure to have your boundaries and to protect yourself in, in that way. Because um, I think that's one of the most important things in a way. Do you know what I mean? And I think it's a really good practice as well. Like, because I think it prepares oh. you for lots of Okay. It's a good yeah. practice. It's a very good practice for the ego, no? What we call ego, no? Exactly. And actually, at the time, I was doing loads of meditation and like a lot of like um, spiritual work, you know, whatever way you, you see that. But in a good way. For me, it, it's sorry. In a good way. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, it was kind of part of that in a way. Interesting. Yeah. A direct one uh, uh, with awareness, or after after time you reflected back and you said it was connected. Or while we while you were doing it, you understood it's connected, or after? No, while definitely while. Like every day, it felt like a practice. But sometimes I'd be cleaning somebody's toilet, you know, and I'd be like on my hands and knees in this really really huge fancy maybe American and you know, bureau bureaucrat's house or something like six bedrooms. You know, they wanted you to do everything so fast. And I was just like, why have you put me in this position? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So like, I wasn't exactly always um, happy, you know, calm and relaxed about it. No, yeah, for sure. At the same time, I'm really glad I had the experience. And I did it like pretty much consistently for two years. So it wasn't like a month, it was like, a bit longer and so I really got my head around how I felt about it and mm -hmm. yeah okay so then being somebody who then went to the next yeah interesting no no it's interesting and tell me this this uh, now okay when when you began that uh, I'm quite sure you said to yourself okay it's a uh, it's a uh, temporary right yeah okay but now yeah. now now it's less temporary now it's not okay you're in a very different <laughs> no, you're, yeah. you're in a different position yeah you're the boss now but yeah, uh, no. still like I uh, yeah sorry yeah i'm just curious no, I'm, just, I'm, yeah. I'm curious how you how you how you how you explain it to yourself and what personally i i really i find it super beautiful and the way you do that i really understand why but i i, I try to put it in words because i'm, I'm curious how you put it in words this temporary towards this is what I do. This is what I do with. Yeah. So basically, yeah. So I think it was really, I was ready for a change. And then I got this opportunity to buy the company. And I just felt like this is just a good idea, you know, just to make, um, to have a little bit more control in my own life, essentially, like in terms of my own financial well-being and um, also to take on a new challenge. I'd never run a business before. And I just, I think sometimes you just do things because it feels like the right thing to do. It just, in that moment, it felt like the right thing to do. And it presented itself to me. And it seemed like just a good, it just seemed like the, a good next step in terms of being able to continue to live here um, to also be able to stop doing cleaning because I didn't want to do cleaning forever. Okay. Um, and just to, you see, I had actually done, I had done recruitment work in the past where I had, you know, 
recruited people for the renewable energy industry and for the IT industry and stuff like that when I was in my twenties. So part of this job is also to find people to do the work, and I quite enjoy yeah. doing that. Yeah. Um, so it kind of brought a couple of things together, and I just realised that this could be a monthly income that I could have, while also taking on a new challenge of running a business, while also not having to clean anymore, which was kind of important, mm -hmm. <laughs> and while also being able to play in Berlin and you know have the life that I liked here. Okay, so you, if I understand, you, if I hear you right, you say after two years of cleaning, your whole point of view about the 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 the, the thing itself changed and. And you just it, you you got very lucky to be able to 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 take over uh, sunshine, and you had no no issue with that. It was like a non-issue. It was a non-issue question in a way. I mean, like also running a cleaning company isn't the sexiest, most high-status position. To have I see. I think it is. That. I think it is in a way, but I cleaned somehow some apartment. <laughs> I think I cleaned it. I needed to clean some apartment to, to understand that <laughs> before. <laughs> so, you know, it's not like it's a high status job either, but it just felt like the right thing to do. Sometimes that's just the way it is. And sometimes the things that aren't like the sexiest thing on the outside, you know, they're like, it's still the right thing to do or it's still the direction you need to go in. And so it's also about this thing of outside, inside, like what do other people think? What does, how am I seen by culture or society and how do I just want to move forward in my own direction? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And sometimes those things don't align and that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, so okay. like, oh. and now it's like, I don't know, four, four and a half years later or something. And I really am happy that I took on the challenge. My Amber actually contacted me the other day and she was like, if you had known what it was going to be like, would you have still bought the business? She's the woman I bought the business from. And I was like, totally, I'm really happy I did it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm really happy I did this because I've learned a lot, basically. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you do so, good, and you do, and you do so good, uh, Dilla. So you don't, you don't. Uh, for me, it's obvious that you you did the right uh, right decision, and uh, and and I'm enjoying it in a way. You know, like uh, really, uh, I appreciate it, and I uh, I learned a lot, uh, and I don't think you know. I, I, it's a very specific and unique, uh, in that sense, meeting. Uh, it's not. It's totally not obvious what you're doing, in, in, my, in my point of view, and how you do it, and uh, and the and the actual uh, and the actual uh, help that you that you provide to people uh, of the team. You know, like, uh, but by by let by letting them uh, provide themselves in a, in a fair way. In a fair way, you know?